Hello and welcome to a video on finding the highest common factor of two numbers using prime factorization. Now in the previous video we looked at finding the highest common factor of two numbers by listing out all of the factors of both numbers and then just identifying which of those factors was the highest and which one was common to both numbers. So just as a bit of a recap if we do that again so if we're going to find the highest common factor of 28 and 64 well let's, let's list all the factors of 28 so we've got 1, 2, 4, 7, 14, and 28. And now if we list out all of the factors of 64, so we've got 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64. And now to calculate the highest common factor of 28 and 64, we just need to identify which factors are common to both numbers and which one is the highest. So 1 is a factor of both numbers, 2 is a factor of both numbers, 4 is a factor of both numbers, and those are the only three factors that are common to both numbers. And the highest one is four. So four is common to both numbers. So we could say our highest common factor is four. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through an example with the same numbers first, just to give you an idea of the process used to calculate the highest common factor. And then I'll give you some to do yourself. So this method firstly involves breaking the numbers down into the products of their prime factors. Now, if you're a bit unsure of what that is, I encourage you to go back and watch a previous video of mine, which goes through that particular topic. So to break a number down into the product, product of its prime factors, let's first of all start with 28. So if we break 28 down, well, I know that 28 is the same as 7 times 4. Now, we can break this number down even further. We can't break 7 down anymore because that's a prime number, but we can break 4 down. Okay, so 28 is the same as 7 times, and then 4 can be broken down into 2 times 2. So 2 times 2. Now, I can't break any of these numbers down any further, so now let's move on to 64. So to break 64 down, well, I know that 64 is the same as 8 times 8. And again, I haven't fully broken it down because eight is not a prime number. I can break eight down even further. So eight is the same as four times two. And we've got another eight, so we're gonna multiply it by four times two. And again, just like before, we can break down four. So four is the same as two times two, so it's gonna be two times two, and then we've got that two there. And then times four, well, we can write that as two times two. 2 times 2, and then we've got that 2 there. So we're actually, we're multiplying 2 by itself 6 times. Now we've broken the numbers down into the products of their prime factors, we can just identify what prime factors they have in common. So we can see that they both have a 2 in common. 2 is a factor of 28, and it's also a factor of 64. They also have another 2 in common. They have another 2 in common. So we could say they have a 2 times 2 in common. 28 has a 2 times 2. 64 also has a 2 times 2. Now they don't have anything else in common. 28 has a 7, but 64 doesn't. And 64 has a bunch of other 2s, but 28 doesn't. We've used all of the 2s from the 28. So the highest common factor is 2 times 2, or we can just say 4. And this is the same answer that we got when we worked out the highest common factor by listing. So I'm going to go through another example now of finding the highest common factor using prime factorization. But before I do that, I encourage you to pause the video and give it a go yourself. Okay, so let's go through this. So first of all, I'm going to break 80 down into its prime factors. So I know that 80 is the same as 8 times 10. Now I haven't fully broken it down because these are not prime numbers. 8, well I know that 8 is 4 times 2. 4 times 2. And I know that 10 is 5 times 2. So... We've got 4 times 2 times 5 times 2. Now we're not quite finished because 4 can be broken down. So 4 is the same as 2 times 2. So it's going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 2. Now I could put this in order. I could group all of the 2s together, but it doesn't really matter for this. But now let's break 112 down. Now I know that 112 is even. So straight away I know that it's divisible by 2. So 112 is going to be 2 times something. So what is 112 divided by 2? So let's just do it up here. 2 does not go into 1. So we carry the 1 over. 2 goes into 11 5 times with 1 remainder. And 2 goes into 12 6 times. So it's 2 times 56. 
but we can break that down even further. So we've got two times, 56 is seven times eight. And then again, we can break that down even further. So we've got two times seven times eight. I know that eight is two times two times two, and we are done. So we've broken both numbers down into the products of their prime factors. Now we just need to identify what prime factors they have in common. So we have 80 has a two as a factor, and so does 112. 80 has another two as his factor, and so does 112. There's another two, and another two here, and there's another two here, and another two here. 80 has five as a factor, but 112 doesn't, and 112 has seven as a factor, but 80 doesn't. So our highest common factor, they both have a two times two times two times two in. So our highest common factor is two times two times two times two, which is 16. Okay, so I'm going to do one more example using this method, but before I do that, pause the video and give it a go yourself. Okay, so we want to find the highest common factor of 192 and 336. So first of all, let's write down 192 as the product of its prime factors. So we're going to break down 192. Now I'm not entirely sure what all the factors of 192 are, but I do know that it's an even, it's an even number, so it is divisible by 2. So 192 divided by 2 is 96. So it's going to be 96 times 2. So now we can break down 96. That's a bit easier because I know my 12 times tables, and 12 times 8 is 96. Now we can break down 12. 12 is the same as 4 times 3. And then 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. And then we've got that extra 2 at the end. And finally, we can break down 4. 4 is 2 times 2. And then we've got times three, and then we've got these four twos here. Now we've done that, let's move on to 336. So how can we break down 336? Again, I'm not sure what all the factors are, but again, it's even, so I can divide it by two. So how many times does two go into 336? Well, two goes into three one time with one remainder. Two goes into 13 six times with one remainder, and two goes into 16 18 times, or 8 times I should say. So it's going to be 168 times 2. Now let's do the same thing for 168. Let's divide that by 2 because it is even. And I know that is going to be 84. So it's going to be 84 times 2. And then we've got that times 2. 84 is 12 times 7 if you know your times tables. 12 we can break down it into 4 times 3. We can break down 4 into 2 times 2. Okay, so now we've identified the prime factors of both numbers, we just need to look at which factors they have in common. So we've got a 2 here and also a 2 here, so they both have a 2 in common. We've got another 2 here and another 2 here, so they both have a 2 times 2 in common. But we're not done, they've also got another 2 in common, we've got a 2 here and a 2 over here, so they both have a 2 times 2 times 2 in common. And they also have another 2 in common, there's another 2 in common in both lists. So overall, we've got four twos here and four twos here. So both numbers have a two times two times two times two in common. Now, do they have any other prime factors in common? Oh, yes, they do. They both have a three in common. They both have a three in common. And do they have any other prime factors in common? Well, no, they don't. We've got a seven over here, but we don't have a seven over here. So what do both these numbers have in common? Well, they both have a two times two times two times two times three or we can just evaluate that to find out what the actual number is. So three times two is six, six times two is 12, 12 times two is 24, 24 times two is 48. Now you may be thinking that this method takes quite a long time to do, but in reality, it would take probably a lot longer to list out all of the factors of the two numbers. And there's a good chance we might miss some of the factors if we were to list them all out. So for example, you might not have spotted that 48 is a factor of 192 and 336 just by listing out all the factors. So by breaking them down into their prime factors, we can be sure that we have the highest common factor. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.